Hi, my name is John Meneghini, and I'm here today to talk about NVMe performance enhancements. In this presentation, I will give a technical overview of the NVMe abort protocol. I'll explain the technical problems and limitations with the abort command. Now I will introduce TP4097, the abort performance enhancements technical proposal that was just ratified at nvmexpress.org. I'll highlight the changes that we made to the abort command and introduce in the new IO cancel command. I'll end with a demonstration of a Linux host aborting IO with the cancel command. The NVMe controller provides a scalable queue design. This is the distinguishing feature of the NVMe architecture. It consists of an admin queue and multiple IO queues that allows scalable performance for applications that want to scale out IO parallelly. This really is the distinguishing feature of NVMe and it sets it apart from other protocols. However, this controller structure in queue design presents some challenges for IO recovery, especially when it comes to command timeouts. Like most protocols, NVMe provides a whole toolbox of commands to deal with error recovery and timeouts. The first level of recovery would be to send an abort command. If the abort command is not successful, IOQ disconnect recheck commands can be used to reset the IOQ, thereby clearing all the IOs in the queue. If there is more than one IO or more than one queue, then a controller reset can be used. In this presentation, I will talk about the enemy abort command in particular and some of the problems we have. We'll start with the abort command limit. The NVMe specification allows the controller to actually limit the number of commands that can be submitted to the controller at any point in time. If the host does not obey this limit, the controller can fail the abort commands with an, uh, with an error status. So most admin queues have a limited admin queue size, typically between 32 and 128 queue, queue slots is uh, most admin queues. The ACL prevents aborts from filling the admin queue. A typical ACL is between, between two and 32 commands. This allows the host to abort a few commands, but if the limit is ever exceeded, the host will simply return that excess abort command with an error. A typical number of IO commands, it depends upon the IO configuration. But this really has a negative impact on abort performance and scale. One possible solution to this problem would be to provide a per IOQ abort mechanism, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The next thing I wanna talk about is what I call the abort completion ordering problem. The NVMe spec abort command currently has this ordering requirement. It's highlighted in bold here. This is a strict ordering requirement and it is something that creates problems with the abort protocol itself. So when a command times out, what will happen is the host will send an NVMe abort command on the admin queue. The controller then works to find and abort the command that was requested. If the command can be immediately aborted, that the completion queue entry for the aborted command is posted on the respective IO queue before the, the abort command CQ is posted on the admin queue. In the simple case, this is all good. However, if the command can't be immediately aborted, the abort can actually hang while working to abort the command. This can then lead to an abort command timeout itself. So now the host actually has two commands that are timed out. It has the original command that it was trying to abort and the abort command itself times out. So the host, this is a direct result of the way the abort command is defined. This is, this is because of the abort completion ordering requirement in the specification. Of course, the controller is going to react. Uh, the host is going to react by resetting the controller. So there is a provision in the MVM specification to allow the abort to simply return an unsuccessful status. So this is so if the controller is not able to abort the command successfully in a reasonable amount of time, 
Rather than waiting for the abort timeout, it will simply return an unsuccessful status. But the end result of that will also be a control or reset. So this brings me to the next topic, which is what I call the abort status semantics. So the abort command itself is defined as a best effort command. And the status that is returned is very simple. It's one bit. If the uh, command is su successfully aborted and the abort command returns uh, status with a bit one cleared, if it was not aborted for any reason, bit zero is set to one. So there is very little diagnostic information for the host to understand what actually happened. So the fact that it's defined as the best effort is really to say that the controller can do whatever it wants. If you send your abort command, you know, it, you may not even get aborted. It, you may get a command timeout, but more than likely the controller is just gonna not do anything. And it really, uh, this has been a problem. In NVMe over fabrics, uh, the problem is even worse. So one major difference between with NVMe over fabrics is in PCI, we have a shared memory transport. This means that really the delivery of IO commands uh, and abort commands and admin commands, it's really, there's no possibility of any failure of delivery. However, in fabrics, fabrics are message-based protocols, which means we have an unliable delivery transport. This means that in addition to this, we can have transport timeouts. So we have got abort commands that can timeout and we've got transport commands that timeout. And it's really hard for the host to really tell the difference. Um, so in fabrics, this is the uh, uh, what I call the abort status information or the abort semantic problem is exacerbated in the fact that we've got no diagnostic information. When it, we get an abort status back, we don't really know anything about what happened. Does the host does the control the host doesn't know if the controller has the command or if it didn't it, it just gave up. It's a best effort command. It doesn't really know anything. The other thing that will happen is that the uh, uh, in NVMe over fabrics. This picture here, we were depicted as a little PCI controller on a fabric with an association. And that's many times the way the May NVMe over fabrics controllers are, are implemented. The first RDMA controllers actually did this. They, they actually just took RDMA IOQs IO and just put them on top of a PCI device. But especially with the advent of uh, FC NVMe and TCP, we really have a virtual controller. So virtual controllers means that we have got a more scalable and diverse controller designs. So large storage arrays are capable of scaling much more IO. We can, we can scale more IO queues, more admin queues, more controllers. And so this really exacerbates the problem with the abort command limit. And so really all of the problems that we have with NVMe, with the abort command, they are really made worse than exacerbated. Another thing is uh, we have what I call BDEV namespaces. So you're not necessarily doing with a little PCI namespace device. You could have in back of your fabric controller, you could have any type of a IO device. You could, you could actually put your NVMe namespace on top of, a, of an asynchronous you know, file system. So the Linux host implementation does not support the NVMe work command with NVMe over fabrics. The fabric transport command timeout error handler simply immediately resets the controller. And in large part, it's because of the way the abort protocol is defined. What is difficult to use with PCI is really completely inadequate for fabrics. With PCI, there is an error handler does attempt to send an abort command, but that abort command, uh, it doesn't even actually look at the abort status, the return status. It simply sends the abort command and it waits, and if it doesn't get the I.O. back, it just resets the controller. It doesn't bother looking any further to try to send another abort command or delete the I.O. queue. So this is really makes the uh, abort protocol something which is, uh, it just doesn't work very well, and it's not very helpful. So TP4097 is a TPAR that uh, we started working on uh, last September, and uh, we've done a lot of work. But the technical proposal, it adds clarifications to the admin board command and it adds a new optional cancel command. So the goals of this TPAR or technical proposal were to improve support for command timeouts, support the existing MVMe queue mechanics, queue mechanics, 
and avoid this command blocking and ACL problems, and also to improve support for NVMe over fabric controller designs. Overall, we wanted to improve the performance of the abort command and reduce latency and increase throughput with aborts. So changes that were made where we removed the abort command ordering requirement, that text is actually no longer there. We added two new types of abort operations. We added an immediate abort, which supports the kind of happy path that I explained in the previous slide. And we added a new deferred abort, which supports a background abort code path. We clarified the definition of the abort command itself that allow us backwards compatibility with existing abort command semantics. And with this new, uh, with these new um, operations, immediate abort and deferred abort, it is possible for a controller now to actually implement an abort run to completion model. So the new uh, IO abort command or IO cancel command is something that was also added, right? So this new IO cancel command eliminates cross queue communication problems and uh, eliminates the abort command limit problem on there is no restriction on the IOQ. There's no abort command limit on the IOQ. It supports a namespace scoped and an IOQ scoped group abort feature and it improves the abort status semantics. It supports also supports a cancel command run to completion semantic. So it is possible with the cancel command to completely eliminate the possibility of any cancel command timeouts. Here are just some highlights from the spec. You can see here, we have both for the abort command and the cancel command, we have immediate and deferred abort operations. Here's the new definition for the immediate abort requirement. And this is the definition that allowed us to remove the language that, that required the ordering between the completion queue of the abort command and the aborted command. It basically implements uh, an IO barrier type of mechanism so that as long as the controller can guarantee that the aborted command will not, will not affect, will have no further effects on, on the host memory or on the media, it, the abort command is free to return its abort status. So here are the uh, new abort status semantics in the MVMe cancel command. We've got a new two new counters. We added the addition to a commands aborted counter. Uh, we also have a commands a deferred abort counter. So using these two counters, the host can actually find out how many commands were aborted. If there was, are there, does the controller even have the command? So the idea is, is that if the controller uh, processes the abort of the cancel command, and if it doesn't abort anything, it can actually increment the deferred abort counter and say, hey, I have the command, it's here, I'm working on aborting it, but I can't promise that it will be aborted. This is a very meaningful semantic with MVMe over fa fabrics. So with the cancel command, we can also do a single can, a single abort, abort a single command. We can also do this multi-command cancel. And there are two different features. You can, you can cancel all of the IOs to a specified NSID, or you can actually ask the controller to, to abort all the commands on the IO queue. And that would simply be by uh, turning on the uh, NSID field of FFF. It's a special wildcard case. So I wanna stop now and do a little demonstration. So I have a setup here where I've got a Linux host. I've turned on some features. This is what my configuration looks like. It's a very simple configuration. I have one NVMe controller with two namespaces. First, I send uh, a uh, supported commands and effects log page and we can see that the, the cancel command is down there. It's IOCS 24. So it's being listed as unknown, but that's just because the NVMe CLI utility hasn't been updated. This is a brand new opcode. So that is basically the cancel command. So this controller supports the cancel command and therefore we can actually use the IO pass through command to actually set the cancel opcode and we can set the command D word 10 and command D word 11. We can uh, use these different command D words to actually start sending cancel commands. So we'll start by sending a few cancel commands with no IO in progress. So this is just our cancel command because there is nothing there to cancel. We, can, we would expect to see that uh, the result is zero, but this just demonstrates how we can send a cancel command to all the namespaces or to a single namespace. 
This is uh, because the cancel command is an IO command, it actually has an NSID. So if we specify the wrong NSID, we'll actually get back an error. So the only two NSIDs that you can specify with the cancel command are the actual wildcard NS, uh, NSID, which is all Fs, or a valid NSID. So this is where we sent an invalid um, SQID. We sent a SQID of two, there's only one IOQ. So that also gave me back an error. So next we'll run some IO tests. We're gonna actually start some IO, start some IO, and we're gonna use the uh, multi uh, command cancel feature. I call it the abort all by simply turning on uh, this bit in, in command D word 11. So we should see back a status. The completion queue entry D word counters will look like this. Uh, you'll have uh, those two different counter fields. So we're gonna start by running some IOs. We're gonna hang some writes. I have a special test point feature in my storage array where I can hang some IOs. So we're gonna hang 10 writes for 20 seconds. Make sure that the trace log is clear there. We're gonna set the test point, start the IO, and we just canceled F commands. And there they are. You can see the status here. Next, we're going to start a command to do multiple namespaces and abort them with the multiple command cancel command. So we're going to do some different things. We're going to start some IO. Uh, you can see the IO running up on the top of the screen there. And we're just start up IO to both namespaces. We're going to give a little bit of time for IO to get running there. And we're going to start sending cancel commands. So the first one we got back, we had uh, one F immediate aborts and uh, 17 hex deferred aborts. Now we're gonna send a different combination uh, to the second namespace. Again, we get uh, 28 F deferred aborts and uh, five immediate aborts. Now we're gonna send this to namespace F. And what this is doing is this is gonna actually abort IOs to both namespaces. And you can see here that the, the, the number of commands that are being aborted has gone up. So the last thing I'm gonna do here in this demo is I'm gonna show you what an actual real command timeout looks like. So what I've done is I've set a test point. I've got IOs are in progress. You see the IOs running there. There are actually 10 commands that are actually stuck in the controller. Now the command timeout in Linux is set for 30 seconds. So you're really not gonna see anything happen for 30 seconds. But what should happen here is eventually we're gonna see that the host is gonna time out those commands and there it is, it reset the controller. So uh, this is what can be avoided by using the new cancel command with NVMe over fabrics. This will be available in uh, NVMe 1.4C and in NVMe 2.0. Both specifications were, uh, will soon be published. The TP is available. You can go to the NVMe Express website to get that ratified technical proposal and find out everything you need to know there. So thank you for your time. Please fill out the survey and let me know how you liked the presentation.